Hello everyone, today we're presenting this dental hygienesis case for the anterior lateral incisors. Firstly, let's adjust windowing. Adjust level until hard tissues turn a yellowish color. Then width and let's unmask soft tissues in red color and black for air. I have aligned the control line towards the maxillary bone. This CT has a high accuracy, so we're skipping the reorient tab Let's access Convert Dicom to STL, having selected our working area, then teeth towards hard tissues and apply. Finally, in this module, let's set three points to match our CT to the main file. Amazing fitness, isn't it? Let's hide our CT by pressing this new feature button, followed by Waxup module. For this bilateral hygienesis condition, we're selecting the two lateral incisors. Let's go ahead and position our crowns. Once we're done placing the crowns in position, let's import antagonist STL. For now, we're skipping nerve module since it's an upper maxillary case. Let's access implant module. As a new feature, you can choose from these two box of save options. I'm selecting maintain model shape since I don't have any overlapping areas. As you can see, the implants are automatically placed in the Waxup crown location. Right click the left implant for customizations and this context menu displays. Let's activate the implant safety zone. However, today we're using our shortcut new features such as this apex dot, which increases or decreases our implant length. and the platform dot, which increases or decreases our implant width accordingly. Here we're increasing at wheel number 1.2. Now that you know these great features, let's customize the bilateral implant angulations in conjunction with our control keys. By pressing tab key, we display our intuitive feature digital eye, in which we can analyze the patient's type of bone using color codification. Let's assign the bone density. I'm selecting D2 for both implants. Once we're done with planning, let's select export tab, press report and fill the implant diagnosis report information accordingly. Here we can choose this checkbox if we wish to include the R2 sinus drill kit. Let's press the OK button. We'll receive our R2 gate report document, which will show the necessary information for documentation or clinical references. Below is the drilling sequence based on R2 guide kit. Now let's access R2 aid module. This is the STL edit step. Today we're using trim model function. Let's begin cutting undesired areas followed by the cut inside. Let's access our new feature repair mesh in which displays optimize. It reconstructs the mesh surface of the model to reduce file size, which decreases loading time when designing, followed by detect mesh errors, then fix mesh. And as you can see, the function detects mesh errors that are not visible. Lastly, let's export it. Let's choose from two options. For this case, I'm selecting R2 Guide. To conclude, let's regenerate R2 Guide. Let's press Blockout, set Blockout Direction, define Blockout Area, then draw the area. Apply Blockout. Base and frame design. Generate base. Select guide hole. Add ons like square and rectangle.
Then labeling, choose from positive or negative. I'll start with positive label. Next, negative label. Build R2 guide. For the label, you'll notice that the positive label on the left has a convex shape and the negative label on the right has a concave shape. Finally, let's export R2 guide. Thanks for watching.